I can guarantee you that at least one point in your life you've gone somewhere new and picked up a rock and thought, what kind of rock is this? In this video, I'm going to tell you about the three main types of rocks. Rocks are what the Earth's outer layer, the crust, is made out of, and rocks are made out of minerals. Rocks must be composed of one or more minerals, and a mineral can be called a rock while a rock cannot be called a mineral. The three types of rocks are sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous, and we're going to go on a little field trip to check out some sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks, like the ones you see behind me, are formed when sediments are weathered off of other existing rocks, transported by wind, water, ice, or gravity, and deposited. These are usually deposited in layers, and you can see this in most sedimentary rocks, and these layers are compacted and cemented into a solid rock like the one you see behind me. Sedimentary rocks are also great at preserving fossils, which is why you mostly see fossils in these types of rocks, and not as much in igneous or metamorphic rocks. This is because sedimentary rocks don't undergo as much heat and pressure as these other rocks. Other than fossils, sedimentary rocks also have other features like mud cracks, ripple marks, and other things that tell geologists the type of environment that those sediments were deposited in. The grain size also tells us the environment in which those sediments were deposited. Something with fine grain sediment is usually deposited in a deeper water environment like an ocean. Rocks with more coarse grain sediment were usually deposited in a shallower water environment or in a stream or something like that. Ironically enough, you can see that these rocks are currently weathered into these small little pieces and they'll eventually turn into sediment that gets transported and then deposited in a new place and eventually turned into another rock. A metamorphic rock is the product of when a parent rock or a protolith goes under intense heat or pressure or both and turns into something new. The minerals and metamorphic rocks go through recrystallization, which is what happens when the atoms rearrange themselves to become a different mineral. Metamorphic rocks also commonly show deformation textures, which proves that that rock went through a lot of stress in order for it to change its fabric and mineral composition. A lot of the time when you're looking at a metamorphic rock, it'll have textures like foliation and folding. So foliation is what happens when minerals, commonly sheet-like minerals like micas, align themselves into layers. This is why sometimes a metamorphic rock can look sort of similar to a sedimentary rock because they both have that appearance of layers. The difference is that the layers formed in very different ways in each rock. Pretty much any rock can go through metamorphism. There's also different levels of metamorphism. So the higher the pressure and the heat, the more intense those changes are. But what happens when that rock is melted and turned into magma? Igneous rocks form because of volcanoes. A volcano can have magma below the surface and above the surface. When magma reaches the surface, it's called lava. When lava cools at the surface, it forms an extrusive igneous rock. And when magma stays underground and cools there, it's called an intrusive igneous rock. The type of igneous rock that forms isn't only dependent on whether it's at the surface or beneath the surface, but also the type of magma. There are two main types of magma called mafic and felsic. So so as magma cools, whether it's below the surface or above the surface as lava, it crystallizes. Think of this as when snowflakes or ice crystallize from liquid water into a solid. All these elements in the molten rock are kind of just floating around, and when the molten rock cools, those crystals grow into a solid. The slower the molten rock cools, the larger the crystals. So this is why you can see crystals with the naked eye sometimes in a rock. This is more common in intrusive igneous rocks because the crystals have a lot more time to grow when they're underground, cooling over a long period of time. Sometimes you can see crystals with the naked eye, but sometimes you need something like a hand lens or even a microscope to be able to see the individual crystals in the rock. Sometimes a rock cools so quickly that the atoms don't even form a crystal structure, and this is what we call a glassy texture. So extrusive igneous rocks have what we call fine-grained or even glassy texture, 
and intrusive igneous rocks have coarser grained texture. If you're curious about the types of rocks and rock formations in your area, I recommend using a website called rocked.org and they also have an app and this is really useful because you can just let it see your location and it will tell you the rocks that are in your area and it will also show you a geologic map where you can click the different formations and read about them. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something and I hope that next time you find a cool looking rock you have a better idea of how to classify it. I hope you liked this video and thank you for watching.